Hi, sir. Hi, I mean, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Very good, very good. So, have we visited all the integration part which was supposed to be done for your curriculum? How comfortable do you feel now? Oh, I feel really comfortable. Uh, yeah, we went over so many exam questions that you did throughout the lectures, which made me very confident in like attempting the questions for my book. Um, and yeah, I think the overview for my book, I had like more than 50 questions. I think, mm -hmm. yeah, like 55 and I attempted like 50, like one of them. So only four I couldn't do. So yeah, that was pretty impressive considering it was like done in less than three weeks. So yeah. That is so true, yeah. It was actually quite fast and the way it was organized, I feel, uh, is a good time to also discuss with some of our students who would like to learn in the fashion you have learned about it. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would like, appreciate if you could introduce yourself and then we can talk to some of our prospective students who would like to learn the way you have learned uh, that would be very nice. All right. Yeah, so um, I'm a year, well, I'm going into year 12 um, and I'm based in the UK. Um, and I came to Mr. Kamar for like one of these uh, topics. Uh, I, I think it was, I don't, I, don't, I can't remember exactly what it was. I, I feel like it was the limits. Explanation of something. and logarithms. Oh yeah, exponential and logs, yeah. Um, I found that topic quite hard and then I contacted Mr. Kumar and then uh, we started these lessons um, from my curriculum. Um, and yeah, I think that what, because we started with exponential and logs, which is like the last part of my curriculum, obviously I found it quite hard to begin with. But um, the way Mr. Clark guided me throughout was very uh, effective and um, his dedication that he showed was uh, really great because that helped the process um, and made it a bit easier for me to like adapt to these new like circumstances that I can put myself in. Um, and yeah, I found uh, the exam style questions that uh, we did throughout the lectures and things uh, were very helpful because usually when I do it at school, I learn the content first and then I do the exam stuff after the like content is all done but because we did it throughout when the exam review came i didn't find it like completely totally brand new because i was kind of used to that um like method and that flow and i think with most of the topics that um we did you always started with like the basis of the topic uh like a pre kind of so in terms of calculus, you did a pre-calculus uh, sessions, which definitely helped that flow into calculus. And then after we did, did a bit of differentiation, that again, that continuous flow into integration. So I think that it, that continuous flow from topic to topic um, is very nice because that makes my like, and I, I enjoy it more because I'm, you know, it's not like breaking up. Whereas when I'm at school, it's like from here to here and like nothing uh, fits in or ties in together well. So uh, yeah, I found that really good. And um, I think just simply just memorizing or like regurgitating a lot of formulas and methods, it's, you're not going to really understand anything unless you learn like the basis or concepts behind it. So with Mr. Kamar, like, uh, on top of my head if you're like deriving formulas and things people always find that really tedious and stuff but just knowing how things and where they come from definitely helps you to understand where and when to apply them so in exam questions so yeah that's good that was my overall experience <laughs> yeah. so actually coming back to integration you said that was really amazing the way you know we just just uh, did few topics and jumped into integration um, integrating everything required for integration so that you could understand it was a wonderful experience for me also. So I'd like to share with my students how all this happened. And so let me share with you the screen, your contents, and our thought process of how we actually did this in less than, uh, uh, you know, about eight lessons, I should say, right? Yeah. So let me just share the screen with you. So basically, I mean, when you contacted me, uh, you shared with me all the contents and the ultimate goal was to get to integration. Right? That was kind of the toughest thing and it is of course because when you're trying to do integration all the concepts about the mathematics which you learned so far should be absolutely clear, right? So I looked into your curriculum and right there 
we have the eight topics which were mentioned in your book, right? So we need to do the integration and especially focus was on X to the power of N and then there were exercises based on indefinite integrals, finding functions, definite integrals, area under, area under the X axis, area between the curves, and then the exam review. So when I looked at this curriculum for GCSE level A, year 12, um, you know, because in year 13, you will do further integration and learn more about it. Right. Uh, I found that there was some discontinuities kind of, and I felt, you know, we, we should bridge these gaps by a few more things, which you will definitely learn in year 13, but bring them now could be a good thing. Right. right. And the very first question which you, or which any student for that matter has, is why integration now, right? Because you did so much of mathematics, so much of differentiation. We know how to find the gradient and all these things, work with the optimization questions and rate of change. Now, in integration, what are we going to do or learn extra? Now, that brings to the major thing which I look into always is the in interest of students in continuing education, right? So, as you know, most of the time, uh, which we began with, of course, that gradient or rate of change is known to us, you know, in real life situations. Life, yeah. yeah, we know exactly what is the rate at which the COVID-19 is spreading, right? The virus is spreading. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing is to go back and look into its control. So that's the main thing. So integration does just the reverse of differentiation or gradient. So right. that is kind of very important to understand. An uh, object falls under the attraction of the force of gravity. At that time, we know that the acceleration with which the object is falling towards the Earth is 9.8 meters per second square. We know about it. But we mm -hmm. are interested in the position of the object at different levels and its velocity. To get to that, we have to do the reverse of the integration. This. And that is integration, right? Mm -hmm. So the yeah. reverse process is what integration is. Now, as soon as the students <laughs> understand the significance of integration, and then also they understand that everything which they learned in differentiation will now be required, but they will have to do the reverse calculation. So they have to really master those techniques before getting into integration, right? So that opens mm -hmm. up you know, our students' uh, learning perspective of the whole thing. And since we started from there, I mean, it became very easy for me to really teach you integration. And that was the only reason that in about five hours of videos, we could actually go through all these eight topics, right? Yeah. You it remember? covered everything, the videos. Yeah. yeah. You remember the simple approach which we took uh, about explaining how the integration and differentiation are really connected. We spent some yeah. time understanding this particular thing, right? Would you like to share with me, like, when I was doing this, what went through you? Yeah, so I think, obviously, like you said, um, this topic is quite difficult. So this simple, like, flow chart showing um, from Xn to then, the, the first part is, like, the differentiation thing. And then that clearly shows the second part, how integration is the reverse of differentiation as we're going back from x n to, yeah, so x to the power of n to, um, well, the integration like function. So um, that flow chart is very easy for almost anyone to understand. So I found that quite useful um, in understanding the concept, like from that um, understand, because I did differentiation before integration. So that understanding from, from getting there to integration was very important for me, so yeah. Yeah, and the important formula which we have to work on during this exercise is to integrate x to the power of n, right? Mm -hmm. So x to the power of n, when you integrate, you get x to the power of n plus one divided by n plus one. We also understood the significance of plus c, why it is so important with the help of this particular flow chart, right? So that yes. was great help moving forward. And as I always feel, you know, when you begin with the formula sheet should be right before you so that you look mm -hmm. at the formula sheet and you are in a position to answer easily all the questions. Once you practice answering questions, 
uh, then of course you'll remember these simple formulas. They become so easy for you. They'll be on your yeah. page, right? So uh, that's what we did. And how uh, how did you find this uh, formula sheet concept? Oh, this was yeah super helpful because going through like questions from my book and um, just going through the lectures when you went through them with me, having a like a page full of all the formulas that we use throughout is so helpful because obviously I'm still getting used to it. So when I wanna, if it comes to different questions and things, I can just look to the formula sheet, pick out which formula I need to use and which one's relevant or which one's the most um, time like efficient or things like that. Um, that formula sheet is right there for me. So yeah, I found that helpful. Instead of like flicking back in my book and trying to find each one. So yeah. I introduce you to the fundamental theorem of calculus part one and part two. That mm -hmm. was not a part of your curriculum. You know, we did take uh, some time for half an hour in understanding all this concept. Now, do you think it was worthwhile to spend that half an hour on this? Yeah, definitely. Because um, obviously, like you said, this uh, fundamental theorem section comes in year 13 for me. Um, but if I didn't do that extra part, even though it's not part of my curriculum, um, I would have felt like there was a few gaps and my understanding wouldn't have been like solidified, you know. So knowing the theorem and everything uh, just confirms and like all the other like um, things I've learned and just puts it all together. So uh, yeah, and I did use some of those methods in um, other questions that um, we went through. So that was helpful, like an easier way to do it, you know. Okay. So we understood the concept of uh, antiderivatives and the definite integrals and the area concept under the curve from the fundamental theorem and move forward with some uh, excellent examples. So looking into a curriculum, you had three or four types of examples, if I just break it down simply. One mm -hmm. was to find the area under the curve between the area curve and the x-axis. The other one was between the two curves and of course taking care when the part of the area is below the x-axis. That means as far as area is concerned, simple concept is that area is an absolute value. It is positive. So keeping right. that in mind, we answered so many questions. How was that concept? How did that concept help you any? Um, yeah, so that was uh, very helpful because um, like you said, there's three different like we class them into three different categories and when different questions show up um, in my book and things, just uh, identifying uh, like if it was between the x-axis and a curve, curve and a curve or things like that, knowing the appropriate um, way to approach the question is uh, very important because in the exam, you're going to get um, so many different questions on these different like varieties. And because you covered such uh, like a variety and like such an overview, it was easy for me to attempt like all the questions. Like I wouldn't look at one of the questions and be like, oh, I'm stuck. You know, that, that didn't really happen because you covered everything. So, yeah. That's so true. And in mm -hmm. between, I actually try to take uh, examination style questions in between so that when you get to that at the end, it will not come as a surprise to you. You'll be mm -hmm. well prepared for it, right? So that was the key to our moving forward. And I hope that helped. Did it really help him? Yes, it did. Definitely. Because like how much closer can you get to the exam if you're not, you're literally doing exam style questions. So it's going to, it's going to pop up in the exam and you're going to know what to do because you've seen it now so many times in the, throughout the lectures and things that we've been going through. So yeah, so it's just super helpful. Yeah, many questions you must have seen do not just involve area between the curves they might sometimes introduce you to some additional area, like in this particular example, or at times they may like you to, you know, take away area from one part, add to the other part. So that makes things very complicated. Mm -hmm. So we took many of such questions, right? So that you're well prepared. Yeah, like this question, they look like, you know, you see that extra bit of that triangle below the x-axis. Yeah. They do that to confuse you, to think that, oh, I need to involve that somehow. But then actually, you just have to find the area of the whole thing, find the area of that little triangle, which is above the x-axis, and then obviously subtract to find the blue area. But they do that in the exam where they put different things in to trick you. So 
just spotting them and like not falling for them it is very crucial. That is so true. You need to save time um, yes. when you have to, you know, look into examination questions. Now, another part of our learning was bridging the gap, right? So I knew fairly well since you shared with me all the curriculum that the next topic could be dealing with kinematics. So when we were working with integration, I took many examples which could help you understand what you are expected to learn in mechanics, uh, which is your next unit or in kinematics. So we looked into such questions and kind of uh, made you friendly with the next topic. How was that approach? Yeah, so you do that quite a lot of where you prepare me for the next chapter, um, but you somehow like take concepts, let's say from another chapter and you intertwine it with the chapter I'm currently learning. So when I get to that chapter, I won't again be surprised and be like, oh my God, what is this? Um, I would obviously be used to some of the elements and features that it encompasses. So yeah, um, it's good to not be surprised continually, you know? Yeah. So yeah, being familiar with it. And many times we use the concepts which you have used earlier. For example, here, this particular table for interval testing, you used it in polynomials and in derivatives, and now once again in integrals, correct? So that yeah. validates your learning as we move forward, correct? So I hope all these things really helped us to move forward. And the best part was that we were in a position to do this session with just five hours of videos. When I just worked out, like, what did we do during this mm -hmm. lessons? So I kind of made a summary of this um, uh, learning, and I visualize from here there was just five hours of videos which helped us go through all the topics yeah wow that's amazing you don't realize it like that For only five hours oh my god yeah that, was cool. that just shows like the variety that you cover for me to attempt all the questions by book in like five hours so yeah that's this is quite impressive <laughs> Uh, so, yeah. I mean, get ready for the next session on mechanics now. We we'll, should be looking into kinematics and the related issues. And of course, when you go to uh, next year, year 13, we'll look into more details of integration. It was <laughs> really wonderful to work with you. And I, uh, I love the way uh, you learned the things and uh, you did so many questions from your book. Uh, mm. That was really amazing, I mean. I couldn't have done it without you, sir, <laughs> honestly. like. Uh, it's, it would have been impossible because before I came to you, I've, I've tried to attempt the questions from my book just to see. And it was all like a, literally a different language. I don't even know where to start. I was so confused and it was not good. I was like, really, my enthusiasm for maths was going down. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I just chosen it for A-level and now I don't like it. And like, what am I going to do? I was trying to think of a different subject to pick and all of that. But then I found you and then I was like, oh my God. Finally, I got my love for maths back again. <laughs> so yeah. That's great. And I hope you get amazing marks in mathematics and continue your interest with the subject. This is really a very wonderful subject and it's going to help you a lot in future. Definitely. So, Thank you so yeah. much, sir. Thanks, Emmy. All the best. Looking really forward to it. have more sessions with you. Definitely. Thank you, Thank you sir. Bye.